Yet you take a look at a lot of these worship songs that are being written, and it's all about the cross, the cross, the cross. And it is not bad, guys. Please understand that it is not bad. We go back to the cross to remember what Jesus did, that he conquered the grave. Yes, he did, and he's the worthy is the lamb that is slain. Yes, we do recognize, recognize that he died on the cross, but when we worship, we no longer go to the cross because Jesus isn't there. Aren't you guys glad Jesus isn't there? Because boy, we are in big trouble if he's still hanging there, dude. <laughs> We're in big trouble. Okay? Jesus is no longer on the cross. That cross is empty. And it bothers me sometimes to see people wear these necklaces with Jesus on it. I'm like, history update, yo. Three days after that, he was gone. Long gone. Okay? <laughs> now he's exalted at the right hand of the Father. When we pray, when we worship, when we sing songs, we come before the throne of God, not the cross. We, we come before the supremacy of Christ, not this dead Jesus on the cross or the empty cross. We go back to remember what happened, but we don't worship there anymore. Okay? I become a part of expanding his kingdom and reaching all the peoples of all nations. You check out, I just took a missions class this past semester. It's fascinating. From Genesis all the way through Revelations, it's this concept of all nations, all peoples, all tribes, that when God created, like we were saying yesterday, that he's a creator God, he created and he came to save. And so instead of saying, Jesus, you become a part of my SATs and my tests today, it's saying, Jesus, I want to be a part of expanding your kingdom today. What are you doing in this world and can I join? Because he's the supreme, he's the supreme one, right? Yes, he came as a servant to wash our feet, but check it out, guys, he's not a servant anymore, he's a king on high. When we sing about a king, but sometimes we still treat him as a servant. Well, I become a part of seeking his glory on earth. It is no longer about me. Now, a few years back, how many of you guys are familiar with the term Tamagotchi? Oh, you guys are old. Okay? Or, or Gigapets? Right? Okay, okay, so just a quick recap of what those things are. Okay, it's these little... I had a... I think that's about it. It grosses me out. I had this yellow Pikachu one, right? And I think, I, I think it's a conspiracy from the government to help kids lose weight. Because every time you walk, it clicks. And the more it clicks, the more points you get. So you see like all these chubby kids like running around campuses, right? And then, and then they got smart and they take these things and all they do is just sit there in class and you this in the back, okay? How many of you guys even have one of those? Ah, you nerds. How many of you guys, okay, at least I've heard of it or know what I'm talking about, right? So I had these Tamagotchi things, and they're so, now that I think about it, it's so annoying, but you had to feed them, you had to change its diapers, my monkey died because I didn't give him a vaccination, <laughs> I could never be a vet. Okay, so there's these Tamagotchi things that we carried around with us, and here's the sad thing, is that the church has produced a new product called Tamagotchi Jesus. He's is this cute little Jesus that sits inside our little pocket, and we walk around with him all day. Ouch. Right, and here's why. Um, is that we start to, whenever we need him, we're bored, we take him out, we play. Hey Jesus, I have a problem here, come out here and help me. Hey Jesus, uh, I'm short on money, please help me out. Hey Jesus, uh, I have a sermon to preach tomorrow, uh, to help me. It's a little Tamagotchi Jesus that we keep in here. And it's so convenient because when we're done, we're talking back in and we go on with our lives. Jesus, it was great worshiping you on Sunday. That was cute. Put you back in. Put you in sleep mode. And I'm going back to my school. And that's what we do. And it's funny, but at the same time, it's, it's dangerous because this affects the way that we worship. This is how the church worships. Ready? Look in our pockets and say, indescribable, pocket sizable. You see the depth of my shirt and love me the same. You are so cute, God. <laughs> so, well, that's, what, that's how we treat God is that he's at our convenience when we want him when we need him what do you think people are saying to Jesus today in heaven thank you for helping me out with my test and, and again I'm not saying don't be thankful by all means give thanks always and Paul says with prayer and thanksgiving and everything that you do to give thanks to God okay I'm not saying don't give thanks but at the same time there is something way beyond what we're going on here on, here on earth, what's going on here on earth. Okay, that there's something much grander. Um, wake up, dude. 
This thing went back into sleep mode. Ah. Okay. So the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. You guys know what a footstool is? Okay. Um, Ryan, could you pull out a chair for me right out here real quick? Yeah. If you don't mind. Oh. Okay. Ryan, will you sit down? <laughs> I'm picking on you because I love it, though. Okay? Actually, here, scoop back a little bit now. There. Okay. Now, this is, now in olden days, let's say that Ryan's a king, okay? Let's say that he won this awesome battle and my country <laughs> lost like, out, yes. okay? They would conquer the king, and there's, there's, in the Hebrew, there's two ways of understanding this. One is that you keep this the loser king under the table, and once in a while you throw him food. And it's kind of entertaining to watch because it's like, ah, ha, ha, the king of blah, blah, blah. Well, he's eating off of my crumbs. And you, you, know, you treat him as a dog, basically. Well, the other, other understanding, which is what is written here in Psalm 110, is the other king would literally get on his knees on all fours, this king, both legs, bro. Um, thank you. Okay, this is what you do for 24-7. It's a humiliation. It's a very, very silly form to be in. And I actually kind of feel stupid. So, Ryan, if you don't mind. Thank you. Okay, so that's what the... Thank you, Ryan. And so that's what the footstool is. Okay, um, check out with me. Think about it. When Peter preached, did he preach a crucified Christ? Interestingly not. In Acts 2, it says, For David did not ascend to, this is Paul preaching here, um, or Peter preaching, For David did not ascend to heaven, yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, again, he's quoting Psalm 110 here, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Now, church leaders, okay, I want you guys to take note of this next passage. This is the reaction of the people when that was preached, okay? When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. Not because they felt bad that they crucified Christ, but they realized that he was the Messiah and we missed it. We lost our opportunity. And so they said, you know, Peter, what should we do? And he says, repent. Repent and be baptized. And later on today, that's what we're going to have is an opportunity for you guys to come forth and to repent and um, we'll have our leaders pray for you. Um, but check